Hey guys, uh, welcome to the lab. We're back with some more exclusive content. Uh, we're going to give you guys an episode of Behind the Brims today, uh, joined by Michael, aka Seamus the Skunk. Hey. Mike, how you doing? Good, doing really good. Good, good. We are here to announce something really cool. Um, it's been something that's in the works, that's been in the works for a long time. The final product has finally landed. I'm super excited. Um, but before we kind of go through the hat releasing, um, I, I think it would be cool to kind of tell the backstory um, behind it. So sure. you're wearing version one, which is the cash cow. I cash got cow. version two, uh, which is a Murica, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, which is prime. It just landed. Um, but this kind of like origami series um, that you've been having with the clink room, can you kind of break down um, what inspired that and what kind of made you um, want to cr create such amazing pieces? Oh, thanks. I, you know, at first I just wanted to play with um, dimension and shapes. Um, the very, very first one that I do was was called Paper Tiger, and it was just it, just an origami tiger, just a very basic pose, um, and it it was just it was a lot of fun to work on it. And it, it's not like drawing my normal design where I'm you know sketching everything out. It's I've got, yeah, I've got the general outline that I draw, but then each segment that I go, I'm just drawing on a geometric shape, putting it on a single layer, and then going to the next layer and just doing a geometric shape of a completely different color block. Um, the cash cow and the Amurica, you know, those I went back to, to add the, the details and that kind of thing, but um, it, it was a really different challenge. I wanted to see if it could be done in, in embroidery, you know, I saw those, uh, I can't remember who does it now, but they've got the, the paper airplane line, you know, they're sold all over the place. It's the black and white striped paper airplane that's yeah. on uh, New Year's. Planes. Uh, Planes. Yeah. 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 So I, I wanted to see if I could do something similar to that, um, actually show dimension just by changing the colors that were supposed to be on each side. And it worked so well. Um, I said, okay, well, what else can I do with this? And um, I don't remember even what the first one to hit crits was. I don't, I don't even recall if one actually hit crits or not. But then uh, Tim, uh, Gemini Triplets, he messaged me and said, hey, um, you know, I really like this origami style that you're doing. Could you do one as if you were folding a dollar bill? And do it in a cow and we'll call it cash cow that's a great idea you know <laughs> and he just left me alone and let me uh work on it and do my thing and you know the rest of it just flew from there um the second one there the the Amurica, that one that one's by far my favorite hat that i've made okay um, and it's it, it's just so much more personal for me and it's uh my son he's always really interested and in, uh, so his name is Seamus so he's the real Seamus the skunk mm -hmm. um he's always interested in in drawing and doing whatever I'm doing so all the years that I was doing shirts um he would come to me and pitch me ridiculous ideas for shirts and, and some of them we made and some we didn't um but he when cash cow came made sure to get him his own so he has his own little fitted collection going. I, I think he's up to like 10 hats now. Um, and he said, well, I, I really like that cash cow. If I draw something, if I draw a cow, can you make it look like that origami as well? Yeah, sure. Show me, show me what he had in mind. So he drew this cow in the American flag pattern. Uh, he wanted an eagle on the back of it, but we just didn't have the room for it on the head. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was it was such a good sketch. We're like, hell yeah, let's let's do that. Um, right. And it was it was a really really cool thing to finally have that show up. Um, I'm not very uh, uh, Instagram savvy, so I I tried to do a live unboxing um, 
when it finally arrived, I didn't tell him that it, it was actually shipping yet. Uh, so I had him opening the box and seeing what it was. Didn't right. work out too well and it didn't save, but uh, it was still, <laughs> the memory was still a really, really cool moment. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So um, I don't remember if this happened off air or on air, but uh, when I first had you featured on um, Sundays with the Clink Room, I remember telling you, like, yo, the that origami, cash origami series, because um, I believe you had one with a skull as well later. Yeah, uh, Heather, Heather and I, she she wanted to know if uh, we wanted to do like a skull and crossbones. That was dead money. And mm -hmm. I did another one that was folded like a butterfly for my wife. Yes. Um, yes. And that neither one of them went. But but yeah, that that's when you when you messaged me with the. Uh, yeah. And I was new. like, and, and, and I wanted to give you the backstory because this was a series or this was a hat that I always had in my mind. Uh, my good friend Joanne, uh, that I used to work with, um, funny story, her boyfriend at the time, now her husband, Carlson, we used to work together in a past job. Um, Joanne ended up finding us the job that me and Carlson one ended up going to, and uh, she ended up working there as well. But uh, I, I, I don't, for whatever reason, had a dollar bill, um, like a lucky dollar bill that I brought back from Dallas, and I had asked her to fold it up. Um, I, I saw it online somewhere. It was a t-shirt. It was like a dress shirt, like a business suit. Yeah. And I asked her to fold it up because um, she's just more <laughs> skillful. That guy's like, there's no way my, my dumb fingers could do it. But she ended up folding it up and making me the origami, origami dress shirt dollar bill. And that thing, I glued it or I taped it to the corner of my monitor. And I looked at that every day. We, I used to be in sales. So that was something that I looked at every day. And um, it was kind of like my, my good luck charm. So when you had um, done all those things, I was like, damn, you beat me to the punch because I really wanted yeah. to do that design. And I talked to Tony about it and kind of showed him pictures and whatever. And it, it just kind of just sat in the back burner. Um mm -hmm. You know, in the million ideas of things you want to do, it was just like, yeah, All right, yeah. we'll, we'll do it eventually. And uh, I, I, I saw you do the thing. I was like, damn, you beat me to the punch. Um, and I was so amazed with with kind of uh, the final product because how Clink handled the embroidery of Cash Cow and the textures and yeah. the certain parts are raised and and um and 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 folded and the detail that you put into making it like accurate to where like what part of the bill would show where depending on the yeah. fold. I, I just thought chef's kiss, man, you, you did, you did an amazing job. So I was Thanks. like, all right, this is a project that, you know, maybe you want to do it. Maybe not. I don't know. So I, I approached you with the idea and I think originally we were going to take it to clink, but then it was something where we were nervous that if it didn't get picked up, like what would we do? So I, I think we eventually came on, um, the agreement that like hell let's let's just release it <laughs> so yeah um that whole process was so fun and so smooth and i thank you for yeah. uh, being so easy to work with and um so fun with that but uh yeah like can you tell me a little bit about the the process on uh, your end on and how how it was like to to kind of work uh with me i guess so so that one was a, a little trickier than the other ones um because it if you remember the first version that I that I sent over I think I've been working out. on on it assuming it was like a I want to say it was a 20. Oh it was a 20 okay I knew it wasn't a one and now yeah, like, nah, yeah, it's it was, gotta it be a one. It was either a hundred or it was a twenty yeah. and um you know I'm trying to find these reference photos to see where if it's folded here what what part of the bill is going to be seen and um then I was running into the issue of everyone that was posting you know, their their little shirts folded like that uh they're all using new bills and it was really hard to find an older one because the newer yeah. bills there isn't a whole lot going on in the center of it it's it's just big expanses then it's got a lot of room for the watermark um and that that was not working at all on the design um so so the the, the re the legwork on it the, the research on it was a lot more intensive than I had thought it was going to be to start with. Um, 
but it was it was really easy, man. Working with Campologists has been um, really great. You know, I just sent you a, a picture on Instagram and said, you know, is this the direction that we're going in? Do you like what we're doing so far? Um, it, and not to compare Campologists to the Clink Room, you know, we all know the Clink Room just, they've got magic elves or something working in back there, <laughs> you know, to... Yeah, to, yeah. to be able to do all the digitizing. Um, yeah. Not everyone can do that. And I, I didn't know just how detailed can I get and expect you or Tony to be able to um, get that to translate. So um, I fortunately have a couple of Capologist hats. You know, I have um, mm. the Ramin. Mm. Yeah. Shout out to me. I, I wear that every time we go out for Chinese. And I've got the uh, metallic samurai. Camera, camera. Yeah. Beautiful. So I, I grabbed those um, just like I started doing with clean cats when I was still fresh. I grabbed them, took a screenshot, put it on, uh, put it on my four by three canvas to see, okay, well, if that's how big it is in real life, then now I know how detailed it can actually be while I'm working on this. So it, it translated really well to, to, to the new design. Yeah. I think one thing um, that kind of sets the clink room apart and, you know, kudos to them, they deserve it. But number one, Casey has final say and, and final touches for sure. So like, that's already like you, you cannot compare the two, but um, they have the ability to kind of like send stuff back or get sample swatches and all that stuff. So, like that, that gives them a real big competitive advantage. I've tried to send some stuff back with New Era, and you know I get it. You know, like the scale is different, and and kind of you kind of get, you kind of only get like a couple shots at it. Like you give them what you want, and kind of give them the idea, but then they kind of decide, you know, where everything goes, and that's fine. They they do thousands of designs and sure, yeah. of styles all the time. So, um, did you I, run I, into any of that with with this hat? uh well i kind of know now like it's just like you have to specify like the size and, and kind of oh. tell them where you want stuff done if possible like, i think if you use the words if possible it's a little bit better <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, this way or whatever yeah. like, hey, if possible do this stuff so um this one wasn't a lot of back and forth with them i think we got oh. it back uh, I, I I like the uh, the mock-up that they gave um, or the uh, the approval sheet. I don't know exactly what it's called, but um, send it to you. You're like, yo, let's go. Send it to Tony. Double thumbs up. I'm like, all right, let's go. The only the only thing that we were considering is like, do we add a side patch to it or do we add some extra stuff to it? And you had um, um, done some stuff and, that, and we we put that to the side. So I, I like how it turned out. I think this hat is awesome. I think I gave you like three colorways, or you gave me three. I don't even remember how the colorways exactly got. Yeah, I, you know, we considered doing a panel hat, and, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to make a panel hat, but they either sell really well or they they just sit there, and we don't yeah. want to run into that. So yeah, and and I think the colorway that we ended up doing is so cool because it's it's similar to what you've already done, but mm -hmm. different. I didn't want to pull too much from your other stuff but yeah um, let's just get right into it so yeah. I, I have it here too so let me just show it on camera right here so we want this like cool cilantro green on the hat not yeah. very many hats are made in this kind of color uh we got the filigree with the tc logo on the side so like just some of the elements you would normally see on a dollar bill but then we went with a copper outline on it and this thing just embroidered so cool really did yeah so that we're... that copper just hits so hard stands out so well from this um i would <laughs> i was really glad to see the the back hit there in copper as well yeah yeah and then we went with a, a vegas gold um under visor vegas gold mm -hmm. button um but yeah we nicknamed this a dollar in a daydream for uh the old me my old job and um, that job meant a lot to me because that's kind of where I got my start in hat uh, producing. And and uh, every day I would just go there. I'd go to work, try to do my job. But then I ended up forming 
uh, a jersey company and ended up learning how to make and create and design um, new air hats just for the teams we played on um, yeah. when I was there. So uh, that that's what kind of got me my start uh, within this industry. Um, and this kind of represents my time there. And, and I'm so happy with how this came out. And I can't thank you enough for being such a great partner. Oh, yeah. It was it was a real pleasure, and it was uh, it it really did turn out very nicely. I was I was very pleased when I saw the mock up come, and uh, it it's exactly how I how I envisioned it. So kudos, man! It it really really worked out. Perfect. So uh, for those who are wondering, um, we'll be putting these on sale at thecapologist.com at three p.m. Eastern. So if you're watching this live, it's about noon. Um, on Thursday, uh, you'll be able to cop this in a couple hours at 3 p.m. So um, I'm glad that we were kind of um, able to do like this behind the brim segment to kind of give people a refresher on number one, who you are. Yep. Um, you're not on you're not on camera as often as I would like anymore, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of uh, give praise to. Uh, the series that you've kind of built and started um, with the clink room. And, and this is just a next step to it, man. Um, and this is two birds with one stone for me. Cause uh, number one, I've always wanted to work with an artist like you, just, just a killer artist, just to kind of see Thanks. you um, develop and, and refine your style. It's, it's so cool. Like that. You, you can see things. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a shameless design. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and to be able to add, um, a powerful artist like you to 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 the roster of of talented people we've we've worked with at the Capologist, man. I'm so blessed uh, to be able to um, add this to to the pile there. This, this hat is killer. Yeah, and it's it won't be the last. I mean, I'm already working on a couple others, so mm -hmm. yeah, definitely, man. A lot this of good one, stuff. Yeah. It brings back a lot of memories, man. I love it. Cool. Very cool. The color choices we used in the in the threads and and, and the in the shirt, man, everything just whew, this is a killer. So, um, if you if you want one, the capologist.com, 3 p.m. Eastern. And uh, where can people find your work and kind of get connected with you? Uh, most of it, I have everything uh, up on my link tree, so it's link tree slash Seamus the Skunk. Mm -hmm. That'll take you to um, you know, my stuff on the Clink Room, and it'll take you to. Uh, my storefronts on Nito Shop and T Public. Perfect. All right. Well, for Mike and Leon, till next time, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Brought to you by VFTV.